breathe upon your wall and let not one person do the same. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat. Ask the Lord, say, open my heart. Say it, open my heart. Open my understanding to behold wonders out of your word. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Shout a louder, amen. Shout the loudest, amen. You will not live here the same way you came. Shout the Lord must say amen. amen. Secrets of financial blessing overflow part two. And here we shall be looking at the subject of being a blessing. After that we'll do the wealth mantle impartation. Somebody will live here very, very financially massive this morning. If you are that one, you say a louder amen. Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 2 and 3. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Who is God speaking to? Can you say it louder? Amen. Amen. And I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Somebody that God is speaking to, can you say a louder amen still? Can you say a louder amen still? Our objective this morning is to understand the power of being a blessing. I want to start by saying that being a blessing is a major secret of being blessed by God. And being a blessing is the ultimate of being blessed. Let me say five things about the matter of being a blessing. Number one, the objective of God is not just the blessing of man, but making man a blessing to his generation. The objective of God is not just the blessing of man, but making man a blessing to his generation. God's focus is not just to bless you. His focus is to make you a blessing. Number two, there is something better than being blessed. And that is being a blessing. There is something far better than being blessed. Far better than just having a car, having a house, having money to send your children to school in Nigeria or abroad or anywhere. There is something better than being blessed. In fact, there is something higher than being blessed. That is being a blessing. Thirdly, God will only bless you to the capacity of your willingness 
to be a blessing to your generation. Again, God will only bless you to the capacity of your willingness to be a blessing to your generation. God can never bless you higher than your willingness to be a blessing. So the blessing is directly proportional to your capacity of being a blessing. Fourthly, that is God will never bless you beyond your level of existence as a blessing to your generation. Fourthly, it is a blessing to receive, but it is a greater blessing to release. It is a blessing to receive, but it is a greater blessing to release. Getting is a blessing, but giving is a higher blessing. Those who get are plenty. Those who give are few. Acts chapter 20 verse 35. He said, I have showed you all things. How that so laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is a blessing to receive. But it is a greater blessing to release. Can you imagine somebody say, what is a bill like up to 60 or 75 million? Can we just make it round figure to 100? Can you, can you beat that? Those are people who understand the power of release. It is a blessing to receive. It is a greater blessing to release. Beloved, what God wants to do with you is not to make you a depot. He wants to make you a channel. God does not want to make you, turn you into a container. He wants to turn you into a channel. He doesn't want to make you a pool. He wants to make you a river. Hey, 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 hey. He does not want to make you a pool. He wants to make you a river. He's not planning to turn you into a lake. He wants to produce an ocean. Out of your life. Out of your life. Out of your life. Out of your life. And if you believe it is you God is speaking to, shout the loudest. Amen. Make you a channel. Now, when we talk about being a blessing, what are the dimensions of being a blessing? Dimension number one is being a blessing to God. This series is going to be very massive. Now, so, you are to be a blessing. And then, being a blessing, dimension number one, is being a blessing to God and the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things. Shall be added. Unto you. Seek ye first. The kingdom. Of the Lord. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things. Shall be added. Unto you. Listen to this. Everything you do in life makes sense and produces results only when God is placed first. Everything 
everything we do in life makes sense and produces result only when God is placed first. That is, in your journey of life, anything that must make sense, that must produce result, God must come first. For example, if your time must make, make sense and must produce results, that time must be given to God first. That is, seek God first in the morning. Martin Luther said, I have so much to do today that I must spend the first three hours in prayer before God. That is, if I don't put God first in the morning, the balance of the day will be wasted. It applies to every area, including the area of being a blessing. There are those who can have the mind of giving something to the poor or try to be, do charity here and there. But giving directly to God is not in their dictionary. So they are wondering why things are not working the way they should. Everything in life makes sense and produces result only when God is placed first. That is, you can bless that as many people as you want but there is a direct giving to God that is the master of all givings. And when we say being a blessing to God, somebody say, can we bless God? Yes. Psalm 34 verse 1 said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. In addition to blessing him at all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In my mouth. So being the blessing to God must come first through the following channels. Wow. So now I must be a blessing. And number one, I must be a blessing to God. And now being a blessing to God, there are dimensions of being a blessing to God. I'm the first. So number one, A, number one, whatever, however you are numbering. Now being a blessing to God the first dimension of being a blessing to God is the tight. The tight. Being a blessing to God and his kingdom that will usher you into financial blessing overflow is the tight. And let me say a few things about the tight. Where we find the tight. The tight is a channel and the tight the tight can be located through scripture in five locations. First, before the law. Before the law of Moses, the tithe existed. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 to verse 20, because some people argue and say the tithe is a matter of the law and we are not under the Old Testament law anymore. No, sir, that's not true. The tithe came... 430 years before the law. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him the tithes of all. There was no law written. There was no book written about Titan at this time. And I'll talk about that shortly. It existed before the law. And Abraham gave the tithe first. Before the law, the tithe existed. Secondly, the tithe existed in the law. It was a part of the law of Moses. So the law, it came before the law. It is inside the law. Leviticus chapter 27 and in verse 30. Leviticus 27 and in verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the first of the three, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. All the tithe of the land is the Lord. Whether it's the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees, it is the Lord's. It is holy. So the tithe existed in the Lord. Thirdly, it existed in the prophets. Okay, the Bible talks about the law and the prophets in the Old Testament. So you have the law and the prophets. It existed in the prophets. Not just the Old Covenant now. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to verse 12, it said, 
will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you, you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now. Here we say the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Say the Lord of hosts. So the titan existed before the law. Existed in the law. Existed in the prophets. And fourthly, the tithe existed in the gospel. That is from the master Jesus himself. Existed in the gospel. Or exists in the gospel. In, in Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. See what Jesus said. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. And you have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. This ought you to have done without leaving the other undone. You are right in paying the tithe. But as you have paid the tithe, what about being merciful? What about justice? What about equity? Don't do this and omit this. Am I communicating? Now give me the New Living Translation, the Living Bible of that passage. It will make it clear. The Living Bible, New Living Translation. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens. But you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but don't neglect the more important things. That was a validation. He said, what is the use titan when you are in bitterness? What is the use titan when you cannot forgive those who offended you? What is the use titan when you are living a, 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 a negative lifestyle. So it was a validation of that. Can you look at another translation? Yes, woe upon you Pharisees and you other religious leaders, hypocrites, for you tie down to the last mint leaf in your garden, but you ignore the important things of justice and mercy and faith. Yes, you should tie it, but you shouldn't leave the more important things undone. Am I communicating? So we have tied before the law, tied in the law, tied in the prophets, tied in the gospels, and tight, fifthly, in the epistles. That is inside the new covenant. Paul the apostle, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 6, all the way to verse 8. Hebrews chapter 7. He said, but woe, he said, but he whose descent is not counted from them, received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here, men that die receive tithes. Here on earth, there in the law. But there, he receiveth them. Paul the apostle speaking. That the one who sits on the throne is still receiving tithes. He receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. That is... The, the, the church may count the offering, the accounts office may give you a receipt, but the real person who received the tithe is our high priest that is on the throne there. Somebody say a loud amen. How many of you have some understanding as we are going on? Why is this important? Because it is not just what you do that produces you results. It is the understanding with which you do them. Because it is possible to do the right thing continuously without seeing the right results. Because results come as a, as, as a product of revelation, as a product of understanding, as a product of insight. Somebody say a loud amen. I'd like you to take the following note about the tithe. And then we'll get into the benefits of the tithe. Note the following. Number one, the tithe, tithe, the tithe is not, tithing is not about the law, but about the covenant of supernatural supplies. 
it is not an issue of the law. It is an issue of supernatural supplies. Bear that in mind. It is an issue. It is a matter of supernatural supplies. Second, I already said that, but I'll say it again. The tithe existed over 400 years before the law was given. That's very, very, it's important to note. It existed, it's not, it's not a law matter. It existed over 400 years before the law, the law of Moses was given. Third, Abraham, the father of faith and symbol of the blessing, was the first titer in scripture. And you will understand why that is important. Abraham, the father of faith and the symbol of the blessing, was the first one to tithe in the whole Bible. That's important and I'll show you why that is important shortly. He is the father of faith. He is the symbol of the blessing throughout the Bible. He was the first one to tithe. Number four. Abraham's walk with God. Gave him access to the understanding and practice of the tithe. Abraham's walk with God gave him access to the understanding and the practice of the tithe. What am I saying? He didn't read it from anywhere. Nobody taught him. Abraham's walk with God gave him access to the understanding and the practice of the tithe. Nobody taught him. He didn't read it from anywhere. It appeared as if God in his discussion with God, it appeared like God began to tell Abraham, now I have promised you greatness. I want to make you big. If you want this thing to work, don't eat everything I give you. Set for me the first 10% of all that enters your hand and see what I will do with you. Ay, 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 ay. You see, if you get the secret of people, you can get their success. Note it down. Secrets are the sponsors of success. If you can access the secrets of people, you can access the success of people. This, was, this has nothing to do with a commandment. It had to do with a revelation. It has to do with a secret that was delivered to a man. If you want me involved in what you do, give me 10% of what enters your hand. That was Abraham's secret and it was behind Abraham's success. Is God speaking to anybody here? Now that list leaves us to point number five. To follow the faith of Abraham and access the blessing of Abraham you must take the steps of Abraham to follow the faith of Abraham and access the blessing of Abraham is to take the steps of Abraham if I take the steps of Abraham, if, if I want to follow the faith of Abraham, I want to access the blessing of Abraham, I am duty bound to take the steps of Abraham because God is not no respecter of persons. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, it said that you be not slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Be followers of them. Be followers. Take their steps. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. It says so then. They which be of faith. And faith is a product of action. Works. 
they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. If I am going to have the blessing of Abraham, I should be in faith and I should take his steps. Romans chapter 4 verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk. God is the father of circumcision of those who walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. So there are steps that Abraham walked. Steps of faith. They walk in the steps. This is New Testament. So in case someone says, why will you tithe? You tell them, Abraham's blessings are mine. And I want those blessings to be mine. So if they are going to be mine, I must step, take his steps. Abraham's blessings are mine. Please don't mind my powerful voice. I have been preaching for many days. Hallelujah. This is very important. To follow this the faith of Abraham and access the blessing of Abraham, we must take the steps of Abraham. Number six thing to know about the tithe is that God never gave man the license to eat everything he gives to man. He never gave man the license to eat everything he gives to man. It has never been God's, God's practice to say, what I give you, finish it. Right from creation. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Somebody said, if God did not want them to eat the fruit, what happens when the fruit becomes ripe and when the fruit drops? They should just leave it. No. They will gather it. Because God paid them periodic visits in the cool of the day. Sir, since the last time you came till now, the fruit you say we should not eat we have 100 of them. Just to let you know, and this is it. All right, God bless you. I bless you. <laughs> and then they carry, angels carry the fruit. If we are not to eat it, we are to present it to the one who owns it. Am I communicating? Never has God given man the license to finish everything from then till now. And then number seven thing to note. The Bible said. Number seven note. There is what to give to Caesar. And there is what to give to God. Put it in another way. There is that which belongs to Caesar. And there is that which belongs to God. In all the things that we have, something belongs to Caesar. Something belongs to God. Caesar refers to the government, the authority. Jesus, in Mark chapter 12, verse 14 to 17. Mark chapter 12, verse 14 to 17. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that you are true and you don't care for any man. For you regarded not the person of men, but you teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give 
or shall we not give? But he, that is, should we pay tax? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why are you tempting me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, and he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. They were asking about tax. And he gave them another message. Do you know the summary of the message? Pay your tax, pay your tithe. <laughs> don't dodge the tax and don't dodge the tithe. Out of your resources, there is what belongs to Caesar. How many of you know that many of us, you pay tax whether you like it or not? Every time you make a purchase, they, they already added it. Value added tax. All manner of taxations are happening everywhere. And you are not arguing. You are not quarreling. You are not saying, why did you deduct this? Why are you deducting this? And meanwhile, you are paying the tax, but there is still no light. In the Western world, you pay your tax and everything is working. The road is working. The power is working. Everything is working. But you pay the tight and then uh, you are still struggling with, with light. You are still struggling with water. You are still struggling with every single thing. But you don't complain. But God is saying, give me your tight. I am the owner of your life. And you said, why? What if he carries life the, the way they carry light? Or carries your heartbeat or your breathing rate. God forbid. Look at your neighbor, say, Give to Caesar what you should give to Caesar, and give to God what you should give to God. Put it in the directory, say, Give to give to the government what you should give to the government, and give to God what you should give to God. Now, somebody now say, Pay your tithe, pay your tax. And pay your tithe. Pay your tax. And pay your tithe. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. In summary of this point or conclusion here. What is the benefit of the tithe? Like I said. It is not what you do that produces result. It is the revelation with which you do them. You can do the right thing without knowing what to expect. In the village, they call tight, divide it by 10. Or dividing it by 10. They pay in the village churches. But the status of life never changed for most of them. Because the revelation is not there. It's just, it was just a religious duty. Hallelujah. What are the benefits of the tithe? Number one, the tithe confirms man's stewardship and God's ownership of the resources in man's custody. Say that again. It confirms man's Stewardship and God's ownership of the resources in man's custody. That is, it confirms that what you have is not your own, and it confirms that you can be trusted and entrusted to any extent. Luke chapter 16, verse 10, the Bible said. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in the much. When 10 million hits your hand and you took 1 million out of it and say, Lord, I give you this as my time. You are saying to God, I confirm that I don't own this 10 million. Since
since I am not the one who gave myself the life that was available to get the money, I didn't give myself the breath, I didn't give myself the brain, I didn't give myself the energy that works or anything. You own everything. I confirm that you own all this money. And I just release this as a confirmation of your ownership and of my stewardship. I am a good caretaker. The meaning of that is, I am available, Lord, to be trusted with more. Some people say it's because I don't have much money. That's why I cannot give any tithe. Listen, if you cannot give on 10 naira, you will never be able to give on 1,000. You will never be able to give on 10 million, not to talk of 1 billion. God won't even try you near that. In preaching, we said, if you can't make sense in five minutes, you won't be able to make sense in 50 minutes. You won't make sense in five hours. You just be beating around the bush. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? This is very, very important. Your tithing makes God to confirm your trustworthiness that you can be trusted and you can be entrusted. God is not afraid to pass any amount of money through my hands because I am not, I mean, there is no struggle. Not now. From the year of 1986, high institution days. Number two, the tight establishes mastery over money. And the conquest of greed in the heart of man. It establishes mastery over money. And the conquest of greed in the heart of man. One of the challenges of most people is when they, when they, when they, get money, the money got them. Instead of mastering money, money mastered them. Instead of using money, money is using them. Instead of controlling money, money is controlling them. But the power of release breaks the power of mammon. Write it down. The power of release breaks the power of mammon. If there is the power to release, especially towards God first, and then towards anybody, it breaks the, the grip of mammon. You are saying money doesn't control me. Money does not determine my behavior. Uh, it, it, it does not enter my hands and then ruin my life. I, I run money. Money does not run me. It breaks that power. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 he said no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other he cannot serve God and mammon so the power of release breaks the power of greed can you can you understand Tithing is beginning to influence your character in the area of money. Your character is adjusted. Where money does not make you useless. That is number two. Number three. Tithing grants access to resources beyond earthly scope limitations and conditions. He grants access to resources beyond earthly scope, limitations and conditions. That is, you are tapping into resources that are not under the control of the earth, under the control of earthly limitations or conditions or scope. He said, bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out 
a blessing. I am going to be dealing with you from resources from up, not from resources here. Am I communicating? What is the meaning of that? The tithe connects earthly resources with heavenly sources. The, the resources that you have on the earth are connected to sources from heaven. Sources from heaven. It is a supernatural flow. A supernatural flow that cannot be arrested. Somebody say a loud amen. Very, very soon, somebody is stepping into a realm of wealth, a realm of resources that inflation cannot affect, that deflation cannot affect, that recession cannot affect, an unfinishable dimension of resources. If you are a believer, shout the loudest, amen. If you are a believer, shout the loudest, amen. If you are a believer, shout the loudest, amen. If you are not faithful as a giver, the future of your resources cannot be guaranteed. Cannot be guaranteed. And I'll talk about that shortly. Hallelujah. One day I went to dedicate the business of someone. At that time it was worth nine zeros in billions, like two or so billions. And all of a sudden, the whole thing crashed down to zero. Crashed so much until it involved court case, involved almost imprisonment and so on. It crashed so much. And I asked the, 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 the man, I said, what happened? Are you faithful? in your covenant practice, in your giving, because when you deal in this realm, you, you don't want to give any chance to any devil. He said, no, sir. I wasn't. Just took it, things for granted. I did any, I did whatever I wanted to do whenever it is convenient. I actually assisted him at that downturn with cash. He sold the car seat before. I returned it back to him. I said, you know what? I want to help you. I don't want you stranded. I knew it was with your good heart, but I want you to take it back. And he appreciated it. He said, thank you, sir. And I was happy with that. And two told him back. Two told him back. Two told him back. You know, you don't know what you have until you lose it. Until you have lost it. So he returned back to the path. And then God brought him back. I said, how are you now? He said, I'm back. He said, about two billion passed through my hand last year. It's a merciful God. It's a God who gives you a chance. You blow it. It gives you another chance. I believe that there is somebody here today. There is somebody here today. God is giving you another chance. Is giving you another chance. Is giving you another chance. If you are a believer, shout the loudest. Amen. Shout the loudest. Amen. Is anybody getting anything here at all? Number four, is that number four? Number four, the tithe is the blessing covenant connector. It is your link to the promised blessing of scripture. Your blessing covenant connector. It is your link to the promised blessing in scripture. The tithe point is the blessing point. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest 
of the Most High. Keep going. And he blessed and he blessed him. Can you come, sir? And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. He said, take the blessing. Take the blessing. This is loaded with blessing. Take the blessing. And as the blessing is about to land, go to the next verse. And blessed be the Most High, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. I like the camera to show what's happening. If this must land, there are many who are only quoting this. I am the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. My, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. You say it doesn't work like that. There is a connector. There is an adapter. hearing what I'm saying here. He said, there, is, he said, there are people who are so frustrated quoting promises. When you, when you, when you, when you discharge your responsibilities, you don't need to beg for your possibilities. You don't need to beg for your possibilities. When you discharge your responsibilities, you don't need to beg for your possibilities. Is a blessing covenant connector. You are in connection. This goes, that comes. Now, he even said it in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Look at what he said. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of a better. All right, back up to verse 6. He said, And he whose descent is not counted from from them, received tithes. He's talking about Melchizedek. He received tithes of Abraham and did what? Bless him who only had the promises before. As he received the tithe, he turned the promises into blessings. He blessed him that had the promises. I prophesy to somebody here today, you shall move from the realm of promises into the realm of the blessings. As you begin to be faithful in your covenant practice, you move from the realm of the promises into the realm of the blessings. If somebody is moving like that, shout the loudest, amen. Say the loudest, amen. I will round off shortly. Number five, the tithe activates divine involvement in human endeavor and assignment. It activates divine involvement in human endeavor and assignment. Another way to say it is, it is connecting divine support to human effort. The titan is connecting divine support to human effort. Whenever you brought the tent, that is, you are involving God in what you do. I made a promise of 500,000 from my spare parts business in the month of February. When I bring 50,000 to God, I am saying, God, this business is me and you. I 
involve you in partnership with this business. This business cannot crash because your interest is inside. Hey, the thing good oh. Father, we release the tithe of this ministry to you to cause the heavens to remain open over this house. When you bring the tenth of your salary to God now, I am saying this so you can understand because it is possible to be tightened without knowing what to expect. Lord, I am involving you in this work, in this, in this, when they are downsizing people, I'm not the one they will start with. I am the one the job will lose. I can't lose job. When I don't have that job anymore, it was job that lost me. That is, I found something better to do. I can't lose a job. I am covenantly tied to God in that job. Am I communicating? I never failed one exam. I had no receipt in the university. My pocket money was tightened from 30 naira in the year of 1986. No receipt, no carryover. When I told somebody the number of points I had in, from A levels, biology, chemistry, physics, say, What? People are struggling with four, five, six points. You are talking of how many points? I say, Yes. My cutoff was above the cutoff for medicine. Am I communicating? Was tightened. You are involving God in the. Don't, don't labor alone. Don't suffer alone. Don't just face what you are doing by yourself. Let God be a partner in your assignment. Let God be involved in the work of your hands. Let God be involved in the labor of your hands. And you will see a difference in your life. There are pastors and there are ministries that don't know anything about Titan. They are only Melchizedek they collect from people. They give to nobody. And the difference is clear. It's as clear as crystal. We don't beg. We don't take any offering on, on crusade ground. And we are not stranded. You are not under any form of pressure. And things are moving. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. The tithe activates divine involvement. Number six, the tithe is giving God the license and permission to demonstrate his benevolence and generosity. You are giving God the license and the permission to demonstrate his benevolence, his generosity in your life. Bring all the tithes and prove me. Let me just prove me. Let me show you. That's why he said you have robbed me. And like I said the other day, you didn't rob him because you can't steal from God. He won't even allow you to steal from me. And what is the meaning of the robbing? You deprived me of the opportunity to prove my goodness. You deprived me of the opportunity to prove my generosity. You deprived me of the opportunity. That was again Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 10. Number 7, and I'll be rounding off now. The tithe is kingdom comprehensive insurance policy kingdom comprehensive insurance policy that protects man's effort and investments kingdom comprehensive insurance policy that safeguards and protects man's effort and investments mm. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke the devourer. He will not destroy your wealth. He will not destroy your resources. Kingdom comprehensive 
insurance policy. It protects your effort and your investments. Am I communicating? I will rebuke the devourer. Listen. The wealth of a non-titer can never be guaranteed. The future of the non-titer can never be guaranteed. If you don't pay it to God, you will pay it somewhere. Somebody say amen. Do you know comprehensive insurance policy? For some of us who are in that realm, what is the, what is the percentage? 12%. It's even more than 10% now. So you bought a new car for, let's say, 12, let's say 10 million. And then they say you should bring 1.2 million for comprehensive insurance. Most Nigerians and most of our people don't. I should give you another 1.2 million. I, I decrease. <laughs> they charm me. <laughs> but you give them that 1.2 million. God forbid. Either the car was stolen or crashed beyond repair. And they replace it with brand new car. It works. One of the young men who gave us an aircraft some time ago, a big aircraft for the crusade. The first time that aircraft worked, he brought me an offering. He said, he said this, is first, this is first charter and I'm bringing first fruit. Can you believe that? This is first charter of this flight and I'm bringing first fruit and he brought the, that first fruit in Forex. And then the flight just Walked and walked, and after a while, he had a major problem that will cost 1.2 million euro. That's not the cost of the plane, no. The cost of the repair. I say, how did you do it? He said, but it has comprehensive insurance. So insurance took care of it. <sighs> so they only paid about um, 30 or 20 percent, and the insurance cleared the balance. That is what happens in the realm of the spirit. If an earthly insurance corporation can safeguard your earthly welfare, how much more heaven's insurance? You see, I will personally rebuke the devourer. I will tell the devil, this is a no-go area. Hey, don't go there. Don't destroy that farmland. Don't destroy that industry. Don't destroy that investment. I wish we can begin to prove God. A cotton farmer in a Kenneth Hagin's, Kenneth Copeland's ministry. You know, in America, farmers are billionaires, millionaires, billionaires. You can have the, the whole land, like almost the whole of half of Abuja as a farm. And a, a cotton farmer, the bee weevil was um, devastating the farmlands. I think in Houston area, people were losing Billions. At a particular time, the cotton needs to open. And if it doesn't open up at that time, then everything's gone. And all farms have been destroyed. And this man carried his tight booklet and stood in front of his farm and just began to wave it. Lord, I am a titan. You said you will rebuke my devour, the devourer for my sake. I stand in front of this farm and I, I lift up my evidence. I tied. I cannot go. My farmland, my invest cannot go the way others go. Others have gone. And he stepped off. See, this farm was devastated from here up till here. And then jumped this farm and continued. With accuracy, with precision. Insurance. Insurance of your health, of your families. You are not permitted to waste money on what people waste money on. You can use your titan to claim your health. I can't spend money. This is a devourer devouring my system as well. Devouring my resources. 
I prophesy to somebody here today in the name of Jesus the devourer shall not devour your life the devourer shall not devour your destiny the devourer shall not devour your body the devourer shall not devour your land you believe that shout the loudest amen At the age of 75, or our robbers was about to pass on. Massive heart attack. He called the wife. He said, tell God, I am a giver. But I'm about to give everything in my account now. And tell him I don't want to die. Take it. Massive. His chemical heart is, 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 is gone. Quarter to gone. Age 75. Now, in, the, in, in our area of the world, 75 is already old, according to us. But he didn't want to go at 75. When he desperately, tell God I am a giver. Tell God I, I, I tell God, but tell him now I empty all my account and release it for the sake of the kingdom. I want to stay here for a, much longer. God gave him over 15 more years. He died at age 91. That is 16 more years by pulling the plug on his giving i prophesy to somebody here you shall fulfill your days say amen like a believer a louder believers amen the titan is kingdom divine insurance policy number eight the tight is the way to notable, visible blessedness and delightsomeness. Notable, visible blessedness and delightsomeness. Nations, Malachi chapter 3, verse 12. He said, The nations, all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. That is, nobody can look at you and claim the ignorance of what God has done in your life. They shall call you blessed. I want to further add that when we say that the tithe makes God involved in what you do, you are open to inspiration, open to ideas, open to the wisdom that takes your assignment to the next level. I will open the windows of heaven. Your mind is open. Your, 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 your ideas flow. Creativity explodes. Because heaven's windows are open. Somebody say a loud amen. Finally, in conclusion, please take the following notes again on the tithe. First, the tithe is a fixed percentage not an arbitrary figure. It's a fixed percentage. It is the tenth of all in, of income. Genesis chapter 28 and in verse 22. When Jacob was talking with God, he said, and, and for this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto you. Tenth. Tenth. Leviticus 27 and in verse 32. Leviticus 27 verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the road, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. The tent, the tent, the tent, the tent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, this sitting is very perfect. Please face that side. Yes, all of you, follow him. Follow his line. Yes, follow him. That's right. That's right. He said, all that passes under the road. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tight. Your animals give birth to plenty children. Pass them under the rod. That's according to the Old Testament. One, two, three. The 
tenth one is the tithe. Again, the tenth one is the tithe. Again, that's the difference between the tithe and the first fruit. Now, this is the first fruit. Face that side again. Pass. First fruit. <laughs> the first one, the first profit, the first increase, the first one that hits your hand is the first fruit. The tenth one is the tithe. Am I communicating? It's one over ten. The Lord bless you. All of you hook your hand together. And since you have been used for this illustration, you must never fail in your giving. You know, God is no respecter of title. There are pastors who don't tithe. And, 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 and things are tight. Poverty continues. Huh? They don't tight at all. They don't tight at all. This church does not fail to receive my tithe every month for the last 25 years. It's impossible. It's, in, it's undreamable. It's undreamable. It's the first check that is signed. It's the first check that is signed. I don't know how many other people's check pass through this church's account than this pastor's check. That's the truth under God. Because you can't, you can't preach what you are, not, you are not doing. Hallelujah. And so I want you to become faithful in giving and let God change your life. Lift your hands. Fresh fire, fresh oil, fresh power. Touch! <laughs> Receive grace to go and do likewise. And I ask that everyone here today, the power of God is coming upon you. The power of God is coming upon you. The power of God is coming upon you. And every demon of scarcity is arrested off your life in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big clap as you take your seat. So, take your seat. Somebody got, somebody got, got a profit of, let me, let me blow your mind. Got a profit of five billion. So, wow, God has blessed me. Let me give something generous to appreciate God in church. And that is my tithe. Five billion. And he gave 100 million. Oh, wow, that is big. But that is not tight. A generous offering never takes the place of tight. Yeah, you, you, you did what you think is, it, it doesn't take the place. It's, a, it's, it's fixed. That's why most people are wondering why things say, but I give. No, no, no. It is fixed. Papa Yedeko said, every time he saw his mother, has a, like a, a can, grandmother has a can beside the, the bed and she'll be putting coin and putting money inside. And he has a grandmother. Grandmother taught him, you see, we should be careful what we teach our children. Grandmother taught him tight. Where he is today, massive wealth. He said, Mama, what are you doing? He said, that is called the tight. It is this one that makes the balance useful in your hands. Do you see what grandmother taught the child? This is the one I am putting aside now is what makes the balance in your hand useful. If you don't give this one, whatever, you, whatever remains in your hand is useless. Very, very important. And then, secondly, the tithe is to be given or set apart. Before anything else, we are possible. That is, money hits your hand. It's either the tenth of it is set apart, if it cannot be immediately paid, or if it can, it is paid. We are possible. So that the God first principle can remain. Matthew 6 33. We are possible. There are people who finish doing everything. The tithe is not the first thing that comes to their mind. They have finished doing everything before they remember the tithe. Not so. Number three, the tithe and every other form of giving should be done willingly and excitedly to produce desired results. 
willingly and excitedly to produce desired results. There are those who, who do it gr grudgingly. There are even those who think they are doing church a favor. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. 9, 6 and 7 say, But this I say, he who swears sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who swears bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Somebody say a loud amen. Don't do it like you are doing church a favor. Don't do it like you are under pressure and under duress. Don't do it and be annoyed. It kills the result. Finally, number four. The tight shall be given into your storehouse. The place of your meat, the place of your spiritual feeding. The storehouse is where the food is kept. The place of the bread. Malachi 3.10 The place of your bread. And if I may add, Giving on fertile ground. I will not give my tithe to anybody I am sure does not pay tithe. And I cannot give my tithe to anybody that will mismanage that resources. Pastor Yere, Papa Yereko said, an American pastor asked him, I said, why is it that people in our church don't give offering. He said, because they don't trust you. He was very blunt. He said, because they don't, oh, harsh your slave. They don't trust you. He said, because see this, see the life you are, see the size of life you are living. You see, in our country, a pastor of your size that can drive this kind of car you are driving. Don't let anybody prophesy to you on the road and say, God says you should give me your tithe. That is a charlatan. That is a fraud. The place of your meat. I prayed for one sister many, many years ago. At the beginning of our ministry, maybe like 25 years ago. Stranded. God brought increase. She got contract, was it from NNPC or somewhere. Money came in millions. And that time, church was still meeting either in Sheraton or somewhere. And she said, that tithe was too big for the church. The church is a small church. Too big. So he gave, distributed the tithe to somebody. Help me take this amount to this place. Take this one to this place. Take this one to that place. That person was a physical devourer. He ate all the money. That is for a start. The tithe didn't reach anywhere. <laughs> Nose dive. Nose dive to zero. I'm not sure the person recovered up till now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget. The fertile soil, that fertile ground, that place of your meat, that is the place of your time. One day, Papa Yeriko preached a message like this in Lagos. And there was a member of the church who had followed them from Kaduna 20 something years. Elder. And the elder said, Okay, I now understand the tithe. After 23 years of being in a church whose major pillar is faith and prosperity, you hear the tithe every year. Yet the man did not understand and followed and continued in financial struggle for 20 something years. You can be old in the church and still not understand what we are saying. And there are those who can just step in. There's someone here who is less than two or three years in the church. This guy will pay tight in the with church account. 2 a.m. If a lot hits his, 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 his account and he gets income, he will wire it that same night. Now paying tithes and giving almost six, 
receiving a harvest of six zeros almost every week. Newcomer who just heard something and just jumped into it. But there are old timers who are analyzing everything until they paralyze everything. Stand up on your feet. But your story is changing. Maybe today, maybe you have heard it all this while and you are now hearing it today and it is making more sense to you today than ever. I decree your story is changing. My counsel is start from where you are and start immediately. From where you are and start immediately. If you wait for perfect conditions, you don't get anything done. And once you have started, don't stop again. At times the devil will say, but the result hasn't come yet. Uh -uh. The Bible said, be not weary in well-doing. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. There was a time I was giving in my life. And it appears as if there was no result. It appears as if those who are not giving were doing better than me. As if those who were not practicing what I was practicing were. They were appearing more successful. But that is a lie of the devil. The devil will make things to look like that. But after a while, the difference came. From the difference, the gap came. I mean, the gap is, is, is an, a, a non-closable gap now. There were those who appeared successful then without practicing the things we're saying. The days of cellular, you know cellular, not nine not. They had cellular who are still struggling. You know, not, not nine not. You know that phone, the very big. Motorola. Nokia, very big. It was 120,000 of that time to get the phone, to get the line. Some of them don't have a house today. Not all that glitters is gold. There are many people who may appear fast today, but they fail later. And there are those who appear slow today, but they succeed later. And I believe that shall be your portion. God is opening a chapter for you, changing the story of your life, changing your destiny. If you receive something today, lift your hands and go on and give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the worship. Give him the supremacy. Dominion rule. Open your mouth and pray. 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 Open your mouth in worship. Father, we thank you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and say, Father. Say it loud and say, Father. Thank you for the revelation. For the revelation of your word. Of your word. I have received your word, received your word and, I and I know my life, my life can never, can never remain, the remain the same. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Thank, you, Lord, thank you Lord for your word. For your word. I, have I have received it and I can never, I can never be, the be the same. I receive the grace, receive the grace to, practice to practice what I have received. I, have received. I receive, that receive that grace now, now. In, the in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and speak to God. Shakate bele te perato soko pa balanda gaya la barada gade ele pete te perato soko frate le perata sata tarata kaza balata na manana lekte fetora katanda grafato le brega darato soko frate le perada gada ba ele te fero go jula ishako go baga daga lege yede na hasadi ele perete sete re daga gaya la la hasadi ele ke sete re te si daga la yada la hasadi ele ke sete perada gaya de gada na storo go bodi la 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 le perete sidi galaratani go go ya la 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 le perete setre di go go sudi ya la 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 le predigada sidi ge ya la 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 yes master in 